Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, 22nd Sun Best Practice webinar. My name is Nicolas Rousseau. I'm product manager for uh, IT asset management at Flexera. And today we will spend one hour uh, on uh, multiple topics. Uh, we'll get some news, of course. And we'll also focus on two main topics. The first one being Flexent Manager 2023 R1 that just got released. We will review together the uh, features of this new on premise version. Uh, and also the uh, application publisher screen uh, that uh, contains a new uh, application publisher centric view of the uh, inventory and business data in ITA. So let's move on. Um, here are the uh, previous sessions uh, topics. So uh, have a look to that. Uh, you can find all of these in the same best practice hub that I will show a little bit later. Uh, but, uh, you know, this session that uh, is about 2023 and one uh, has been preceded by a, a number of other sessions that cover many topics such as uh, optimization for Red Hat, uh, Windows Server SQL, uh, recognizing application, managing and recognizing applications. You will have uh, uh, the links to each of these uh, previous uh, Sun Best Practice webinars and recordings in this first slide. So let's uh, have a look to the agenda. The, we'll start with the last session's pointers uh, and uh, the answers to questions. And then we'll go through uh, quickly through uh, news, uh, knowing that the news are highly related to what I'm going to show later, which is uh, Flexnet Manager 2023 R1, uh, what is new. So we will go through the, uh, through the uh, various uh, uh, features that have been released. Uh, and uh, we will also have a look to the uh, new application publisher screen, uh, which has been uh, released with, uh, which will be released with 2023 R1.1, uh, uh, end of July 2023. So the last session was on the uh, Flexera Business Adapter Studio. Um, the recording and PowerPoints can be found in this uh, article, in this community article. So if I open it, just to show you as a I'm doing uh, every session, uh, you have uh, uh, in the community something called the uh, Community Hub uh, and there is an event and webinar and for each of the sessions, and this one will be available uh, shortly, uh, for each of the sessions you will see the uh, recording, which is a YouTube video, as well as uh, the detailed agenda that uh, will allow you to uh, quickly uh, know where to go if you have a specific uh, area of, of interest. And the uh, uh, PowerPoint I, I will be showing today will be shared uh, uh, as a PDF and is uh, shared as a PDF in each of these uh, recording uh, articles. There was no question, so that will be fast to answer and uh, I will be uh, quicker to the next step, which is uh, about the news. Uh, the news, uh, we, we had uh, 28th of June, so very recently, we had the release of uh, Flexnet Manager 2023R1, the on-premise version, as well as ITAM 2023R1, uh, which have both uh, aligned uh, features. Uh, and uh, on, on uh, uh, so we will go in details in the content, so we will not spend too much time here. Uh, and the uh, ITAM 2023R1.1 is planned for July 19th of uh, so Ju July 19th, 2023, uh, and uh, there will be in particular a new uh, application publisher screen. We will have a look together. There will be a command line version of the Business Adapter Studio for cloud customers, which allows to have uh, uh, to use uh, integrations without uh, being on a beacon, uh, and also the uh, support for uh, ARM64. Uh, ARCH64 uh, architecture by the agent, which is uh, Amazon Gravity. Uh, the same best practice hub, uh, so we just opened that, is uh, the article, uh, one article in, in the community that, that is uh, aggregating a lot of some best practice that we can use, that could be of use for you. So in particular, uh, you have uh, here the list of uh, previous sessions. That's what, was, what I was showing in the first slide. And you also have uh, a number of uh, pointers and uh, explanations on the uh, features. So particularly the three hubs that uh, uh, are going to be released. So the SAM operations hub got released in April. 
uh, the SAM uh, optimization hub was released uh, in 2022, in December, and uh, the SAM publisher hub will be the next hub to be published uh, later in uh, this quarter, which means uh, before end of September. Um, in the article, you see, you find uh, the details on the hubs, what they mean, what they contain, and also uh, many pointers uh, to existing solutions that you can implement, uh, mainly uh, uh, reports uh, that you can implement if you're uh, an on-premise customer, uh, and that uh, sort of anticipate uh, the feature that this uh, hub, uh, hubs are providing. So you will find uh, the details of the details, explanations, and just to, uh, to to show you a product that expanded recently, the SAM Publisher Hub, you see now the visualization that we, we get for the SAM Publisher Hub, and it gives uh, more uh, explanations uh, in, in the article. And finally, the SAM Optimization Hub, which is a big lever to uh, saving uh, money on licenses, is explained uh, in details uh, in this uh, article, uh, and each of the reports has a full explanation on uh, the data that is in the report and uh, how you can use it. So, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, on the bottom, you have many more uh, pointers uh, to uh, interesting, uh, uh, interesting blog posts, uh, interesting documentations, as well as uh, some guides or some solutions which are in the community and that can help you in your day-to-day uh, -day activities. Um, let's move on and go back to the uh, to, to, to the, the main um, PowerPoint. Um, check if you have received the uh, Flexera June ITA newsletter uh, that contains uh, interesting information uh, as, as every month. Uh, you should be in the list of people receiving it. If you if you are not and if you wish to receive the uh, Flexera June or the Flexera ITA newsletter, which is sent by Flexera Customer Success. Uh, please, uh, you know, uh, send uh, me an email. Uh, you have my email at the beginning of this presentation, and uh, you will be able to receive uh, this monthly newsletter. Uh, two interesting pointers in this newsletter this uh, this month. One, which is on web logic, big topic that we are fully covering, and that uh, uh, requires uh, to to use a recent version of the agent and uh, activating the data collection. So if you want to know more about uh, WebLogic and uh, collecting the editions and recognizing the editions, have a look to this article that shows, uh, uh, showing the, the history of the topic uh, that shows uh, what is necessary and what you need to have to uh, be successful in managing uh, this uh, uh, recognition. Uh, recently, uh, the uh, uh, application recognition library 2747 brought uh, a new way of removing false positive. Uh, so there are signatures that come from uh, Oracle Universal Insider Evidence or BEA uh, evidences, which uh, can uh, show uh, WebLogic uh, unspecified edition while there is no WebLogic found by the uh, agent, which is uh, really collecting the right data for recognizing WebLogic. So now we have uh, uh, now we have a mechanism to remove these uh, false positives and make sure that the data you have is uh, ex uh, exhaustive and, uh, and right. Second article that you have in this uh, uh, June ITA newsletter is the, uh, about the intelligent license restriction. Uh, this is a feature that got released uh, back in uh, December with 2022 R2. And um, reading this article, you will uh, get a, a very interesting example uh, on how to use this uh, intelligent license restriction. And so it, it, it talks about the common use case, production and production that you have for IBM or TIPCO, uh, server desktop that you had for Java uh, for contracts prior to uh, January 2023, high density or low density when it's about optimization to, to pick up the right editions of uh, a Red Hat uh, Enterprise Server or Windows Server or SQL Server to cover uh, uh, ESX servers and, and DAVMs. Uh, so all of these topics can be addressed thanks to this uh, feature, which allows to pick up a report as a restriction criterion. So uh, criterion. So uh, the, um, the the fact you can use a report is powerful because it means you have a dynamic target uh, that goes beyond what you could do and what you can still do, uh, which is uh, restricting by enterprise group, and. Uh, 
uh, this article uh, focuses then on, on a specific use case and specific license type, which is extremely interesting uh, to combine with this uh, intelligent license restriction. This is the Microsoft user CAL or device CAL uh, license type. Uh, the, the way it works, uh, this license type is that all users are linked to uh, the license automatically or all the devices. This is a sort of, uh, you know, all consume uh, approach, uh, which in my view had a limited interest uh, in the past, because uh, if you want to, re for instance, uh, manage your Microsoft Core CAL, uh, not all uh, users in the Active Directory should consume a Core CAL. Uh, but now, thanks to this uh, sort of brutal, I would say, uh, license type that takes everybody or every device, uh, and combining uh, with uh, a report, which is, uh, for instance, all the users who are uh, in this and this domain and which uh, account doesn't contain admin, for instance, uh, you can refine uh, the target of the license, and the license will show a consumption which will be aligned to a more, I would say, subtle reality of your devices or of your users. Uh, and uh, a bonus, I would say, that, that anticipates a little bit what you will get uh, in this coming quarter, is uh, this, uh, the code that is provided in this, uh, in this article, uh, that you can use if you're on-premise, of course, uh, the code that will allow to create the uh, new AD group reporting object. So this is the report builder that you probably know well. Uh, you can find in the report builder many objects uh, and you can pick up, you know, installations, applications, allocations. Uh, this uh, new uh, AD group uh, object will allow to create a report that uh, you can start from the user, uh, you know, starting point. This is how uh, you will be able to use the report uh, in a restriction for uh, a named user license, for instance, or for a CAL user, uh, for a Microsoft user CAL. Uh, and then uh, from the user, you can pick up the link to the AD groups. And uh, this will allow you to create uh, a license that counts and shows group for users untitled for licenses or for applications. So the, uh, this is a big, uh, a big change. Uh, many companies manage their uh, application assignments and Citrix is doing that uh, through AD groups. Uh, even, you know, uh, the Adobe portal, you can integrate your uh, Adobe uh, portal with your uh, Active Directory, with your Azure AD, uh, to make sure that uh, the uh, AD um, portal, the, the Adobe portal, sorry, uh, manages the user access rights according to the groups you are managing in Active Directory. So, with this new object, combined with the user, Microsoft user uh, can, you will be able to create a license that, for instance, counts any user accessing uh, powers or uh, uh, accessing, let's say, civil, for instance. So that that's uh, that's a big change, and that will be actually uh, native uh, in uh, 2023 R1.3. Uh, the AD groups and uh, we, we will know that. And a new feature that is coming soon as well is called the intelligent allocation and exemption will allow to use these AD groups to, uh, for instance, allocate to named user licenses uh, any user based on, on this group. So uh, we have a, an extension on how a license can count without the need of an installed application or of a device. It is just based on the uh, existing AD groups. So let's move to the main topics, uh, the two main topics of today's uh, call. Uh, FlexNet Manager 2023 R1. So just got released uh, in, uh, on 28th of June. You can find it. So maybe I will uh, spend a minute showing how to find it. If you go to the uh, community, if you go to product access, so let's say you know, I'm accessing the community. If you go to product access, you will get you will get the uh, list of uh, you know the product and license center which allows to uh, download any product so uh, flex and budget platform is here let's go and you will get if you sign up to sign in sorry you will get uh, the flat list of uh, existing uh, download and you will of course be able to uh, pick up the latest version of uh, FlexNet Manager. Uh, 
uh, you can download the uh, product you find here. So for instance, you can uh, pick up Flexit Manager platform. Here we go. And you will get the list you will get the list of uh, downloads for FlexSync Manager Platform. You get the flat list. OK, so uh, this is uh, for the uh, downloads of the current version, and I'm moving back to uh, the presentation uh, of 2023. So uh, once you have uh, downloaded 2023, you can enjoy all the features. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the biggest one, I would say, uh, it, so if you want to know uh, everything that got released, you can go to the uh, uh, documentation, docs.flexera.com. You can pick up your uh, FlexNet Manager uh, on-premise product, and you will get these features by release. And here you will see, uh, if you go to 2023R1, you get the full list of features that got released in 2020. Uh, since 2022 R2 uh, on the cloud versions. So uh, just to, to be precise, all the uh, features between on-premise, uh, the only feature that got released for cloud, uh, which is uh, for, uh, for instance, for the moment limited to uh, um, users who have uh, um, the next-gen reconciliation, is uh, a simulation engine that allows to uh, anticipate what will be the impact of the license cost if you move some VMs from on-premise to a cloud provider. So that the only feature that uh, requires uh, specific uh, calculations uh, that is not in 2023 R1 <coughs> on-premise, but all the rest is perfectly aligned. And this is what you can find in this document. So let's start with the, uh, and showing a little bit about the SAM Operations Hub. Uh, the uh, so the, uh, there is a link to the uh, full session I made on this one, uh, which uh, some best practice webinar I made on this one. So the uh, some operations hub is a way for uh, on-premise but also cloud customers to have a look to uh, their uh, KPIs and performance for software asset management. So if I run this some operations hub. Um, that you find uh, for on uh, for cloud customers in this uh, node dashboards some operations hub. If you're on premise, uh, you can find the some operations hub by uh, clicking here. And I will show there is better data on the other instance. This instance has uh, limited information. So if I go to the uh, other instance, you see that uh, the uh, uh, some operations hub has a number of KPIs, uh, 19 KPIs, on topics which are very important, uh, failed tasks. For instance, if you if you uh, if your inventory import is failing, uh, it's an issue. It means uh, you may not have up-to-date information, uh, beacons with upload issues, aging or uh, disabled inventory sources, and then you have all the important topics that matter in terms of trusting your data quality. Uh, so vCenter, for instance, uh, are they importing well? This is uh, containing all the links uh, between the uh, clusters, the hosts, and the VMs. Very important for uh, license uh, for server licensing. Uh, out of date inventory, do you have uh, aging inventory for active device? Uh, the reverse, which is uh, uh, act, uh, ignored devices which have been recently inventory. It may be a choice that these devices are not in scope of your uh, inventory data. It could be that, uh, of your licensing, sorry, it could be that uh, you have a process that uh, ignored the device, but it, they're still alive. So it would be a, a risk in that case. Uh, waiting inventory VMs, the VM that this center has found that had not been uh, uh, inventoried by agents. Uh, On-premise or fan VMs, which is uh, an important topic when it comes to uh, Oracle or Windows Server or Red Hat uh, licensing. Uh, and uh, you, you will see one by one some uh, metrics which are always monitored the same way. Uh, on one side, you have the number of issues. On the other side, you have the total scope. And you have a KPI value in percent. And you have some hard-coded uh, performance assessment uh, for the uh, for the various uh, uh, for the various uh, KPIs. So um, you cannot at this stage uh, monitor or fine tune what are the uh, thresholds uh, for the performance. 
uh, and you cannot hide or show uh, some uh, some of the KPI. So today, you know, this is uh, uh, you, you get uh, the full KPI assessment uh, with the hub uh, in two uh, dimensions. One, which is uh, the snapshot, uh, knowing that you have some uh, information which is not related to performance, uh, upcoming contract renewals or upcoming subscriptions and maintenance expiry. This is interesting to know what is coming, but this is not good or bad. <laughs> this is just a fact. So uh, there are no uh, assessments of the performance for these ones. So you have the, the assessment for the snapshot. And here there is a lot of red because this is a demo system, which is very static. It doesn't refresh the data. Or you have also the uh, trend, which uh, shows if things are getting better or not. And here, you know, uh, a typical good trend for these KPIs would be a descending trend. If you have, you know, let's say 100% uh, of your uh, agent version, uh, it's probably 99.9%, uh, which is not up to date. Uh, you, uh, so, uh, unless you you have a test of a recent version of the agent and have deployed other versions, uh, you will probably see the trend to get better as soon as uh, you deploy more agents. Uh, same way, if you have a vCenter inventory issue, which is a very big uh, topic, uh, if the, for instance, the credentials are not working, uh, you will be able, of course, to fix the issues thanks to a report which is provided. And uh, again, uh, the trend should be uh, enhancing or decreasing. So this is uh, the, uh, the, the snapshot uh, vision. Uh, for each uh, of the KPI, <coughs> you get uh, either more information, so it will lead you to the bottom of the uh, dashboard that uh, explains uh, all of these topics. So this is uh, nearly, I would say, uh, a best practice uh, article that, that would explain our documentation that tells you uh, what, what you need to monitor to make sure you can trust your inventory or that you uh, manage uh, carefully uh, your operations, some operations. Uh, you will see uh, the uh, detailed explanations for each of the KPI. You will see uh, a summary of the explanation, of course, and you will see uh, for each uh, a link to uh, a report. So there are a number of reports which come with this uh, new uh, hub, uh, 13 reports and then screens or 12. Uh, so if you open here, you will be uh, led to the uh, to the report which is supporting the KPI. So this is a, a, a little bit of an exercise to, to, to link uh, and connect the dots. Uh, so the report here will provide you the full details. Uh, the uh, hub will provide you the summary. Uh, so here uh, you, you, you will see that you, you can, uh, in this demo data, you have very limited information, but I engage you to uh, run this vCenter inventory troubleshooting report. It is opening your eyes because uh, very often it's complicated. You may have uh, 20 vCenters over the world or uh, 50, uh, and the report provides all the information, which is uh, what is the vCenter, what is the latest uh, you know, issue for, for, for the, um, the latest log of an issue, uh, it is splitting between the uh, automated vCenter, which are coming from the uh, frequent scan, IBM frequent scan, from the uh, uh, um, rule, uh, customer rule uh, vCenter inventories, and you will get uh, information such as what is the last discovery date, the last inventory date, is there a difference? Uh, you will get that here. Uh, you will get uh, information on the uh, ESX server dates, uh, so are the uh, inventory dates for the host uh, mismatching, which could mean that uh, you have a, a decommissioned host that you should ignore. Uh, so you, you have the list of clusters, uh, which come with the, uh, uh, with, with the uh, host uh, and with the vCenter. So you get here, you know, all the data that you need to understand uh, your vCenter inventory quality and the issue that you can fix uh, once you get the precise information. I will not go through each of the uh, reports, that's what I did actually for a same best practice webinar that uh, got delivered in uh, April uh, 2023. Uh, there is a link in the PowerPoint, but uh, uh, really have a look to each of the reports, have a look to the documentation. Each report has a full documentation and it will uh, provide, probably give you a transparency on the uh, data quality and the uh, ways of fixing issues which uh, was not uh, available up to now. Um, 
there are reports which go beyond actually uh, KPIs, which are not exactly uh, monitored by KPIs. So for instance, uh, this report, it's about uh, data quality, can I trust the recognition and the usage? There is a new report that we also use internally to expand our library, uh, ARL library recognition. A new report that uh, is named Unrecognized Installer Evidence Analysis. So you will see you know, some of the reports may be uh, a little bit uh, slow uh, and uh, uh, have a look to the uh, new KB articles. Uh, we are going to release sometimes some announcement of some of the reports. Uh, basically, these are SQL uh, fixes uh, that will allow to uh, be faster and quicker. So uh, the vCenter and motor tubal shooting will get a, a fix, uh, an announcement to be faster soon. And this unrecognized installer evidence actually has no, no, no announcement yet, but it may come later. So you will see here, you know, this report is uh, analyzing all of your unrecognized evidence and is checking for each of these evidences uh, if there is uh, another evidence which is recognized, which eventually links to a commercial application which eventually links to a license, so a license commercial application. And the idea that uh, in the uh, mess of the unrecognized insert evidence, because there are many uh, drivers and uh, uninteresting uh, ad removal program uh, signatures, uh, the, um, this report will put a priority that will be based and documented. So for instance, you know, unrecognized raw evidence Priority one is when there is a matched evidence linked to a commercial and licensed application. So this is an important one. And in addition, you need to create the application uh, in uh, the library because it doesn't exist yet. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky to uh, guess what are the versions, particularly when you have some, uh, uh, some technical versions and some, uh, some, some commercial versions, which is the case for Excel. But you will see that it's extremely interesting you get quickly the view on which are the uh, unrecognized evidence that may uh, be interesting. And you see here, you know, this is uh, uh, checking or uh, comparing to a matched raw evidence, a broader evidence, I would say, which has the same uh, display name or clean name. Actually, it's called uh, the report creates a clean name, which is uh, the uh, application of the ad remove program uh, name without uh, numerical or dots or, or commas. And then it will compare to other raw evidences which are eventually linked to applications which are eventually recognized and linked to uh, licenses and then you get you know all the other versions recognized for the product so the report will catch the unrecognized evidence will even provide uh, uh, a suggested to be created evidence uh, with the right uh, person to, to make sure that you get uh, the right uh, level of, of normalization and uh, will uh, provide you the, the application it should be linked to, uh, to be assigned application, and eventually uh, will uh, say if, if, if you need to create or if it's an existing uh, application. So a deep dive analysis that would take hours and hours uh, manually, and with a new, um, uh, a new uh, flag, which is publisher is licensed. Once you have, let's say, 20 publishers that you manage with your uh, licenses uh, in ITAM or in FlexNet, uh, it becomes complicated to know which are the uh, evidences related to these publishers. So what this, uh, uh, what this report is doing, it is comparing the publisher name to any recognized publisher name, which is linked to a license. And in the end, uh, it uh, shows you if uh, you have uh, an unrecognized evidence for a, a recognized or for a licensed publisher. So uh, I need to move on because I could spend forever uh, in this uh, presentation. Best is maybe that you go to the SAM Operations Hub. So I open the, um, the link to the community article, which is containing the full uh, description. And you will see uh, there is a recording and there is uh, a long, uh, uh, so the, 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 the session takes a lot of time and particularly uh, demonstrates each of the reports uh, and you, you can have a look uh, to that. And a, a, a last one, which is not uh, a metric, is a license analysis issues, license issues analysis, sorry, which is uh, checking for each of your creative licenses if there are some strange things such as missing upgrade rights for named user applications, when well, non-user licenses, which are subscriptions, so you should have normally uh, 
the upgrade rights. It is catching if you're missing downgrade rights, if you have inconsistent upgrade and downgrade rights uh, across products, if you have a multi-product license. So this uh, license issues an ASIS report uh, that you can find here. Um, will uh, give you a lot of information that would take a lot of time again to, uh, to, uh, to process. Uh, particularly one column in this report that shows if there are some uh, reports which are uh, restricting the license. You know, this new feature, intelligent license restriction. Uh, you can know from the license which is the report which is restricting the license, but getting the full picture uh, is uh, a little bit complex. And um, this report uh, will actually uh, show you uh, a column for all of the licenses which eventually have uh, a restriction report, uh, so you get the full picture. Uh, and again, this one got uh, enhanced in July, uh, so uh, the cloud customers will get the enhancements for performance. Uh, On-premise customers will uh, need to uh, uh, have a look to the uh, fix, uh, SQL fix that will be provided as a knowledge-based article that will allow to be uh, faster, even if the report does the right job uh, already today. You see here, you get uh, the visibility, uh, you know eventually if there is a restricted uh, with report. So here, you know, I can see that uh, I have this power center non-production, which is uh, using the uh, non-production devices report, for instance, and you get uh, a lot of analysis. So uh, when was the license modified? Who modified it? Uh, what are the uh, product covered by the license? Do you have other licenses which have uh, an overlap with this one? Uh, and uh, do you have unlicensed installations for this uh, for this license? It's interesting, uh, or uh, you know many things: uh, upgrade, downgrade rights apply, uh, inconsistent upgrade, downgrade rights across products. This is the case here. So uh, this report uh, provides you uh, the analysis, and of course you can fix <laughs> by going to uh, the license and eventually uh, fixing uh, the upgrade, downgrade rights. Okay, so. Um, Let's let's uh, move on for the uh, so you will see slides which explain you know, what is the SAM operation optimization hub. You will get the list of uh, reports and screens, and uh, you can also uh, go to the full uh, session to understand the, the details. If I move on in the new 2023 uh, R1 version uh, features. Uh, you have this uh, Oracle uh, Java worksheet, which is uh, something new. This is an extract of the uh, SAM best practice webinar that was delivered on uh, Java uh, in May. Uh, you have the link here. If you go, uh, I could not show it because I need to move on, but uh, uh, you will see that we already have a full set of features which cover the management of Java, which is a complex uh, topic. So we recognize licensable, non-licensable versions. We allow you to manage embedded instances. This is something called the exemption by fight path. Uh, we can compute comp consumption and uh, using the intelligent license uh, restriction, uh, you can actually uh, split between server and uh, desktop licenses. And uh, in the transparency side, we had a report called application transparency, which is showing all of the raw evidences and the link to the recognized applications. It was for Java, but for or for any uh, any uh, any other uh, application. Uh, the Oracle Java worksheet that just got uh, released in April for cloud customers, and which is in 2023-01, provides the full details, uh, computer by computer and signature by signature, on what is installation path. Is it an embedded instance, uh, which is uh, using actually this uh, exemption by fight path that you need to set up from the license? Uh, and the report is also catching uh, flags which are not uh, part of the uh, recognition, so which which can uh, turn you know a non-licensed version of Java into a licensable installation of Java. So this is uh, what is called the EMC agent mission control and unlock commercial feature. These are specific additional queries that the agent is doing, specific to Java, and uh, that are uh, that have to be uh, considered as an exception list beyond what the recognition tells you to license. So very, very important. And this is 
uh, a new report that you can find in the uh, reporting compliance reports. Uh, and it is next to the uh, Oracle uh, database or Oracle server uh, worksheet. Um, that, that is a, a report we had for a long time, which is showing the full details on the Oracle database and options consumption. Maybe just to, uh, to show it. Since uh, I'm talking about on premise, I will uh, open this one. And if you go to uh, the reports, If you go to the uh, index list, which is uh, license compliance, and you have these uh, licenses. Actually, this is on compliance. You have this uh, Oracle Dev Worksheet, which is next to the Oracle Server Worksheet. So if I run the uh, Oracle Java Worksheet, you have here a, a report which is um, which is giving uh, the full details. Internet connection is maybe a little bit slow today. So uh, if you open the report, I'm opening it in parallel with the uh, cloud instance. The worksheet. You have the report and you can run the report. Okay, finally, there's a appeared here. You can run the report. Okay, so um, uh, this is uh, about the Oracle Java worksheet. So this is one addition, uh, one uh, information on top of everything else. So really have a look to the uh, other. Uh, features uh, which are all in this uh, Java uh, SAM best practice webinar. Okay, so uh, the trends for the SAM operations hub have been added. So uh, in uh, since December, you have the SAM optimization sorry, hub that uh, shows you the uh, realized saving and the uh, potential optimization that you can get. Uh, this uh, report uh, so the, this hub is, is uh, using existing reports, the uh, Microsoft Server Optimization Report, Windows Server, sorry, the SQL Server Optimization Report, the Red Hat Optimization Report, or is using uh, other reports such as uh, Optimal Target Architecture for Oracle, which is computing what would be the best split of your VMs uh, to decrease your license cost for the uh, database and the options, or the uh, then user uh, licenses optimization report, which is catching uh, for each end user, what are the uh, potential savings if you were uh, given the actual use of the applications covered by the subscription, what could be the uh, optimal uh, cost if you were stopping, for instance, some subscriptions. So um, uh, I will uh, maybe just show it on this uh, cloud instance, you have the SAM operations hub, the new, sorry, SAM uh, optimization hub, um, what you will have uh, and that you did not have uh, if you were in 2022 or two was uh, the trend. Interestingly, uh, if you had deployed the 2022 or two, uh, let's say in December or January, all the trend data will be historized because this is uh, stored in the data warehouse. So you will get the trends uh, immediately. Uh, this is this was just a matter of not showing it yet. And uh, for each of these. Uh, um, so for the two types of optimization here, this is the saving versus the classical approach. So if you were using data center edition on ESX servers uh, or uh, Red Hat Linux uh, data center node edition uh, for the ESX servers, and if you uh, use uh, the optimal um, user licenses recommended by the reports, this is computing the difference. So I would say, you know, the if I go back to the slides, you need to, to interpret uh, the data. Uh, on the left part, this is hard to say, you know, that if you have a raising uh, uh, saving, actual saving, it just means that uh, your uh, virtual machine density is getting lower. So typically, if you have few VMs over, uh, you know, ESX servers, many ESX servers, 
uh, the uh, difference in cost between the easy choice of uh, licensing all the SX servers in the data center <clears throat> and the clever um, choice of using what the report tells you, uh, the, the cost will be even bigger if you have less VMs on more ESX servers. So I would say the left part, the trend, is just showing you uh, uh, a feeling on your uh, infrastructure and how your virtualization optimization has been set up by the IT operations. Uh, on the right side, uh, it's, it's a better interest, uh, more interesting uh, approach. The trend will, if you have a decreasing potential saving, Let's say Oracle goes uh, from uh, 10 million to 1 million. This is a good sign that actually you are uh, taking action and you're moving your virtual machines, the virtual machines to the best optimized uh, cluster, uh, which are uh, you know, specialized for uh, specific uh, Oracle options. So uh, the, the right part, the right trend uh, makes more sense, I would say, has more interest and should be decreasing, just like the same operations hub, uh, to make sure that uh, you're taking action and, uh, for instance, stopping subscriptions for Adobe uh, Creative Cloud Complete. Uh, if you click on this uh, Adobe uh, <laughs> colon, you get to the uh, name user optimization report and you will see user per user who is using what uh, option and uh, you can get uh, um, good hints on how to save uh, money and stop subscriptions. So maybe I will just show uh, the behavior for those who did not attend the uh, some optimization hub uh, webinar, which was, uh, I think it was in March, uh, 2023. So if you click on Adobe, you go to this named user license consumption and optimization report. If you run it, the report is going through all of your named user consumption. And for instance here, uh, all the users who have an active uh, Adobe Creative Cloud uh, all apps uh, subscription. Just checking. Yeah, this is the right uh, the right one. So, uh, for instance, you know, uh, Tanner uh, has an active computer which uh, has been uh, inventoried uh, not very recently, but but uh, this is a demo database. And uh, you know how much uh, this subscription costs. You will see for the user what are the uh, installed applications and the uh, install applications with usage, which are consuming from the license. And the report will give you two levels of optimization recommendations. One which is uh, priority one based on installed application. If you did not even install the application, you should uninstall and stop the, or not, not install, you should uh, stop the subscription. Uh, if you have uh, installed applications with no usage, uh, the report is cautious. It says uh, check accuracy of usage. There is a full uh, some best practice webinar on how usage is measured and how to be successful in uh, taking usage. Um, and uh, if usage is reliable, you should stop the subscription. And in that case, the user who is paying today $3,059, who could, you know, have an optimal license consumption of zero, <laughs> Uh, because you stop the subscription, it would say this amount, and then you get the overall optimization. So the uh, report is doing that for Creative Cloud, uh, you know, uh, uh, complete against all, all other applications, um, using this, uh, you know, the, this uh, one to three uh, threshold. If you have more than three standalone applications, it's cheaper to take the uh, all apps. Uh, but the, the report is also in a, a specific manner, uh, catching for uh, all the Microsoft plans. So it's uh, going down the plants. If you have, uh, let's say, E5, the report will check if you have, uh, let's say, installed and used application that belong to E1. If you don't have any uh, on-premise versions of uh, the uh, Office, for instance, uh, application, uh, and the, the report will compute what is uh, the optimal license uh, that could make you save money uh, user per user. And again, it's uh, checking, you know, what is the uh, what are the installed and used um, applications and what could be a cheaper option. So very interesting report. It got released in June of 2022, but I'm sure you know that makes sense you uh, use it and that the interest of the hub, it is showing, you know, numbers uh, that raise questions and then you can uh, take action and understand and analyze. Okay, so I'm moving on uh, because I will uh, be short in time. Um, next topic is the uh, management of 
Linux uh, VMs on ZOS. I will not show, I have some screenshots, uh, but uh, there is a complex topic with these uh, Linux VMs on ZOS that you have uh, four layers of possible capping for the number of cores. Uh, so you have a, you know, Z, uh, IBM Z mainframe. On top of it, you have some helpers, which have some dead VMs. And on top, you know, you have a Linux VM on Z VMs. And the nightmare is that you may or not activate all of the cores for each of the layers. So this VM, which is uh, something we've done for forever, uh, if you have a pool which is capped, uh, in FlexSet Manager or in ITAM, uh, we will uh, count the right uh, Oracle consumption based on the capped number of cores of the pool and not, you know, uh, basically take the physical host number of cores and say, oh, you need to pay for this. This is what is, what is called uh, uh, hard partitioning. So if you have a hard partitioning situation uh, or for IBM PVU or for uh, Oracle uh, processor, uh, the logic of the tool has been uh, forever uh, good uh, to catch each of the pool layer uh, from the physical host, uh, then to the pool, then to the uh, eventually capped cores for the L bar, for instance, uh, the calculation is taking the lowest of the uh, of the numbers, uh, knowing that you may have multiple L bars which each are capped, but a pool which has less cores than the uh, total number of capped cores of the L bar. So these are some quite complicated uh, calculations. And what we have added uh, for uh, the support of ZOS, uh, Linux VM on ZOS, is the ability to inventory uh, the data first, catch each layer, the four layers, and uh, compute uh, and display on screen uh, these layers. So you will see, you know, for instance, this is the uh, uh, this is the um, virtual devices and clusters uh, screen. And in this screen, uh, you have uh, something new, which is called VN pool, to pool type. And you see here the typical, uh, the typical structure of uh, Linux VM on uh, ZVM or on ZOS. So uh, we have captured these layers. We can reflect them with these uh, parent-child relationships. And uh, we can, in the license consumption, so in both in the uh, consumption tab that you see here, or in the uh, reports, uh, that are showing the uh, peak consumption over 90 days, for instance, or over whatever period you want, we are catching these layers of pools and displaying them uh, in the screen or in the uh, uh, in the report uh, with these new columns, pool one, pool two, pool three. Uh, we, we show uh, the uh, details of the details. Next topic is about the WebLogic edition. So there is a full uh, knowledge base article I was showing earlier. Uh, what you could do is uh, go back to this article and have a look. Uh, you will see uh, it is uh, explaining uh, what version of the agent to use, uh, 2021 uh, and OnePlus agents. Uh, and you will see that uh, in the recent versions, uh, we have added this capability for uh, removing false positives. So this is something that requires 2023 and one. There is also a hotfix you can apply on your uh, on-premise version. If you have 2022 or two, for instance, uh, you can uh, do a hotfix. It is explained again in this article. So have a look to this article and you will have WebLogic editions under, uh, under control. I finish quickly with the other uh, topics which were not, uh, which have no slide, Citrix Cloud and Intune Inventory. So we have new adapters. Uh, for streamed applications, we collect the uh, list of uh, untitled uh, applications for users through uh, active uh, directory groups. And we uh, show the uh, name of the uh, streamed application as an installer evidence. So you, there is a little bit of uh, data mapping to do, uh, uh, recognition. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, have these uh, streamed applications consume your licenses, just like it has been the case forever with Citrix. But Citrix Cloud has specific APIs, so we have uh, extended uh, the data we collect. We were able to manage already uh, uh, persistent VDIs, or non-persistent VDIs, sorry. Uh, now, this is a matter of adding uh, these streamed applications, uh, data collection, and uh, license consumption. Intune is a, a management tool that gets more and more use. This is not specifically an inventory tool, which is maybe uh, one, one challenge. Uh, Intune uh, gives you uh, data about uh, installed application. 
Unfortunately, it does not provide the publisher that you have in AdRemove. So uh, the level of recognition for Intune is uh, one step lower than what you could have, for instance, for SCCM. So um, our advice is, you know, if you need quickly to get uh, more data uh, because you have Intune deployed already and you're starting a project, it may be good to use the Intune inventory adapter. If this is about, uh, you know, managing precisely license consumption, uh, uh, we would suggest that you, you use SCCM, uh, which is a better inventory tool for desktops at least, or that you use the Flexer agent uh, for desktops, of course. Uh, it does a little bit more than SCCM for Acrobat uh, editions, for instance. Uh, but for the server side, it, it does a lot more uh, with the uh, Oracle inventory, with the uh, SQL Server editions, uh, with uh, many things that you may not have with SCCM. But, uh, this is all a matter of, you know, where are you in your project? What is your maturity? Getting quickly data, even if uh, it has a lower level of recognition, is better than having nothing. Um, what else do, did we have? So least privilege operations for the agent. So it means you can deploy the agent on Unix without being uh, root or sudo or using sudo, uh, which means that uh, the agent, that, that was a security uh, topic for some customers, you can use the agent uh, in, in that way. And finally, the allocation reason, which is the last feature I would uh, highlight, but go to the list that there is more. Allocation reason is a very simple thing where you have a, a text field. Uh, you were able up to now to uh, document why you uh, exempted a server from a license. Uh, you had no way to uh, explain why you allocate uh, a server to a license. So typically, you know, if you have um, I will show that quickly on, on this uh, on-premise instance. Uh, if you go to this screen, so there are many ways you can uh, set an allocation and, uh, and document it. But if you go to this uh, screen, which is, okay, maybe I will show it on my, uh, oh, uh, so apply allocations and exemptions. Um, this report uh, and this screen, uh, you can check the help, uh, provide some uh, calculations. Okay, so uh, I will, uh, for instance, check on Java. Uh, the screen will look for, okay, so I will uh, go to a better instance, which has data. So if you go to this uh, licenses, apply allocation and exemption, same screen, but uh, slightly different uh, navigation. Uh, you will see that, uh, so that's one of the many announcements. You have now the ability to uh, filter on the cluster. This was not uh, present. It was added uh, back in uh, in June, uh, in, uh, in February, sorry. But if you have, uh, let's say, a number of uh, devices that you want to allocate to license, you can now uh, allocate, and you have this uh, allocation reason that just provides, you know, the explanation. Okay, so uh, I move on to the last topic which is the new screen for uh, application publishers. So uh, why the application publisher screen uh, item as an object-centric view of the same world? Uh, you can access your purchase, your contracts, your licenses, the installed applications, and then you can filter and you can get the big picture and drill down on a specific publisher. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it makes sense in many cases, but uh, some customers, you know, uh, are organized per application publisher. So uh, the, the, this uh, object-centric view, plus the fact that business objects like purchase, contract and licenses are actually linked to vendors, which are not the normalized application publisher, but the uh, vendor you created through an import, for instance, of purchase. Uh, the fact that uh, the business uh, data is not linked to an application publisher was in the end a challenge because uh, it was hard to understand, you know, what about Microsoft? Uh, you may have, you know, a purchase from Microsoft UK and Microsoft France and uh, uh, Microsoft US. Uh, you may have a contract signed with, uh, let's say, a local entity, uh, but it was, uh, it was hard to get the uh, vendor publisher centric view of uh, everything. So uh, we need to position the application publisher in the center of the same game. Uh, that, that's the goal of this uh, new uh, screen, uh, new screen. And uh, this is what we can do through screens, but also the dashboard that, that is the coming Sun Publisher Hub. 
Uh, and then, you know, uh, with that, uh, customers are able to answer the simple but complex address question, what are the publishers, or what publisher uh, matters for me? Um, there are two steps in this SAM Publisher Hub, which will provide visualization publisher by publisher. You, you pick up your publisher on the top right, and then you get all the data uh, about compliance, uh, optimization. This is coming from the Optimization Hub, uh, installed applications, but also upcoming contract renewals or spend, which is something we have not shown so much uh, up to now. Uh, so you get the visualization, the understanding of the data, and this is what comes in Q3, so between uh, now and end of September 2023. But uh, we needed a, a pre-requisite uh, step, which was uh, having a vendor to publisher normalization and a new application publisher screen, which is basically showing the details of the picture that uh, you will see here. So how did it work? Uh, I will show a little bit uh, because I'm connected right now. So if I go to this uh, um, demo instance, and I think the demo instance is quite slow, actually. It, it was not my uh, internet connection. Um, you have, uh, first, you know, if we start with the publishers, or the vendors, sorry, in the procurement side, you, you can go to the all vendors screen. And here I have limited demo data, but uh, makes sense, which are your uh, Providers, you know, HPS LMS, uh, Microsoft, uh, so this is a reseller, this is a Microsoft or Microsoft France. Uh, you have uh, vendors which keep being created when people import purchase. And unfortunately, the vendors are normally not, uh, sometimes not very well normalized. So you may have various vendors, even just for Microsoft. And the idea that uh, this uh, vendor uh, screen uh, has been extended to show the, the licenses where the vendor is declared as publisher and there is a new tab which is called application publisher where uh, you can have a calculated application publisher so uh, there is a script that once a day will check any uh, history uh, of uh, purchase licenses contract and licenses uh, purchase contracts uh, and uh, and uh, yeah and licenses and will uh, calculate for each vendor which have been imported manu manually, a calculated publisher. If you don't like it, you could, you know, uh, pick up Adobe, which in my view is not a very good idea, but uh, you could pick up Adobe and say, no, uh, I want this vendor to be mapped to this publisher. And you see here, the list we see is the list of 22,000 publishers that the application recognition library has. So here, you know, notice that you have uh, Microsoft Inc., Microsoft France and Microsoft, you have the list of uh, normalized publishers. So this is the first step. We have this uh, calculation. You can eventually override the value of the calculation with your own uh, data or own publisher. And the next step is that uh, we have in the uh, license compliance tab, you see we have this new screen, which is called the uh, application publishers. And if you run it, we see it's a quite new view that you, you, you can have on, on publishers. Uh, this is going uh, way beyond, you know, what is installed. So if we take Microsoft, uh, you will see the number of commercial installations, which is not something you can easily see uh, anywhere. You will see the uh, insta commercial installations on containers specifically. But so here, here we have none. Same for installations, which include uh, freeware or uh, components. You will see the number of licenses created for this Microsoft publisher. You will see the number of contracts managed, the number of expiring contracts, the number of process purchases. You get uh, the, I would say, business and inventory view on the publisher. Uh, so very quickly, you will be able to sort, you know, your publishers by total spend or by total, you know, commercial uh, installation uh, inside product. Uh, you will start getting the view on who is on top of the list. Here we have Adobe and uh, Microsoft. Uh, okay, that 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 gives, uh, I, I would say, a financial insight to your compliance and inventory data. If I open Microsoft now, you will see that uh, the goal is to add this detail, uh, providing information uh, on the uh, publisher. And you see here, you know, you have a filtered view of each of the objects. What are the installed applications? What are the licenses? 
what are the contracts. So you see each topic is displayed in the context of the uh, application publisher. And uh, the goal was also to say each of the process that uh, is um, interesting uh, can be performed from the uh, publisher detail screen. So you can create a license from a, a, an install application, for instance. Of course, I would filter here on the commercial only. <laughs> I would filter on the has no license. Uh, so uh, is license no. And here, you know, I could eventually create a license from uh, oh, SQL Server. That's a PT. I have no license created for SQL Server. I can create a license with the right upgrade and progress and so on. So the idea that each tab allows to perform the process that you were able to perform from each of the global screens, uh, but in the context of the of the publisher. Uh, something quite new. So we see here what are the attached vendors calculated or uh, overridden by your uh, by, by your publisher vendor to publisher link, and uh, we have a view on the spend, uh, which is you know summarized spend over five years. So you will see, you know, for the publisher in total. So this is a sum of purchases for this publisher, which have been uh, processed. Uh, and you will see the, uh, the the list of spend uh, as well as uh, the variation from a, a year to another. And on the bottom, this is interesting. You get the detailed spend by contract over three years. So because you have more columns, this is by quarter. Uh, we we re reduce a little bit the 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 time of the reporting and you see here you know you can understand contract by contract what are the highest spending contracts for uh, the publisher uh, month by month for instance or quarter by quarter sorry. and then we have these unlicensed installations uh, that uh, are filtered from microsoft of course but unrecognized install evidence which are not so you need here uh, it was quite complex technically so you need actually to quickly uh, filter from the screen and unprocessed purchase is also filtered based on, on that. So uh, this is, uh, you know, the center of the world is uh, the publisher and you get more data that then will be surfaced in the uh, sub publisher. And uh, the last thing I wanted to do, yes, so maybe uh, one thing from the unprocessed purchase. Here we go. Uh, you cannot process from here uh, the purchase because this is a quite complicated part. So uh, you can go to the unprocessed purchase screen uh, to uh, perform and, and process the purchases and you will find here the buttons which are uh, recalculate, process and so on. So sometimes, you know, in very rare cases, we did not uh, offer the uh, ability to uh, perform all of the processes from the uh, sub tab or from the tab of the uh, publisher detail. That's it. I think that, uh, that's it for today. Uh, um, you will find uh, this uh, recording and uh, the material in the uh, community hub. Uh, you will get an announcement soon. Thanks for attending this call and uh, talk to you soon. Goodbye.